Today, we're going to talk about the three most popular samurai in Japan. Well, the three most popular samurai, I don't know if you say samurai, samurai, well, in Japanese it's called samurai, samurai, and they are called san eiketsu. These three specific three we're going to learn. They're called san eiketsu, which means three heroic masters or three heroic people. Um, these three men, um, I, cho I chose or I choose or most popular, I say, uh, because I'm from the area they are from and I'm very proud of it. And people from Aichi prefecture area, they are proud of these people. Uh, but they're also well known throughout the, the whole Japan and also in the world as well. Many of you have heard of these, especially Oda Nobunaga, the first one in red. Uh, or you might say Oda Nobunaga, but in, in Japanese we say Oda Nobunaga. And the one in the middle, in yellow, is called Toyotomi Hideyoshi. Toyotomi Hideyoshi. And the third one, Tokugawa Ieyasu. Tokugawa Ieyasu, probably. <laughs> well, these three major samurais we're going to look at. Well, I said I'm from Aichi Prefecture. No, Aichi, where is it? But let's have a look at the uh, the map of Japan today. But today's Japan looks like this. And the yellow circle, the yellow dot, that's where Kyoto is. Kyoto used to be the capital of Japan in long time in history. But now today, as in the pink dot, Tokyo. Tokyo is our capital in Japan. And as you can see, there are and a huge island up north and little islands in down south. These islands called Hokkaido in north and Okinawa in south. Back in Sengoku period, back in 15th or 16th century, they're not Japan's, they're not Japan's territory or they're not the part of Jap Japan. Well, Hokkaido, um, used to be called Ezo, Ezochi, and the original, the native people called Ainu, Ainu, and they have their own culture, they have on their, their, their land. And Japan from the mainland had a connection, had uh, some people uh, living there or like to try to conquer, try to communicate with them, but they were not Japan's at that time before, until, uh, until nine, 19th century or something. Okinawa used to be uh, a kingdom called Ryukyu, Ryukyu Okoku, Ryukyu Kingdom. And it became uh, one of the, the Japanese islands in, in also in 19th century or like 1800. And then Kyoto was here. So in this period, and then Aichi Prefecture, uh, as sh shown in, as in the stars, that's where it is. And Kyoto, where the, the emperor was, where the shogun was, was very close from this area. And these three men we're going to talk about, they are all from this area and they had advantage to um, try to conquer that Kyoto because they are very close and still, they had also um, very developed uh, towns and the villages and the uh, the castles and stuff. And then, without leaving the leaving home for a long time, they can get back. They can just you know try to uh, conquer the uh, the capital at that time. So it was strategically a good like location, and they took advantage of the location. So we talk about samurai or samurai, but what is it actually? Samurai, uh, when we talk about samurai, we have to have a look at these four terms. We start with bushi. Bushi 
when you um, look at the kanji, bu is um, stands for the um, the weapon to be armed um, to fight, and shi represents a person, especially men. So bushi um, can be translated as armed warrior, or just you know a person or a man with weapons, a man armed with all kinds of weapons. And then samurai. Samurai is basically a bushi who is, a, who serves or who guards noble people or like people in upper class or with power. And samurai, the term comes from uh, the, the very old Japanese saburau, which means to serve, to be at service. Saburau, saburau, samurai, samurai. So a person who serves for those people, for those you know, noble people. So samurai is an upper class bushi. And then busho, busho, bu is the same as in bushi. Uh, and then sho here means the leader or the commander or the general or the, you know, someone on the top of the group of the, the, the army and stuff. So busho is basically the leader of bushis. And they usually have many vassals and servants. All the troops and you know, huge group of people, huge number of group of people. And they lead. So they are called Busho. And then Daimyo. You might have seen this. Um, daimyo, Samurai, Daimyo. What's the difference? Daimyo is uh, usually called warlords. So Busho, the leader of bushes, Busho with lands and powers. And then they're not the leader, the, the ruler. They're not the ruler of the, the whole nation, but they're just, they um, they have control of those provinces or the local areas. So bushi, samurai, busho, and daimyo. Well, these three guys, they're bushi slash samurai slash busho slash daimyo. You know, they, they are daimyos, they are daimyos, but they used to be busho, they used to be samurai, they used to be bushi. The samurai, well, I mean, they can be called as samurais, but they're actually daimyo as, as a status, as a position. But daimyo covers uh, to be a samurai. Well, um, history of Japan. This time, we're going to talk about Sengoku Jidai, where these three men came from, uh, or they, they lived in the Sengoku era, Sengoku period. But when we have a look at the whole history of Japan, we have to go back to like 10,000 or 20,000 years ago as in the history of an, the island itself. But we don't need to do this this time. So we have to skip to uh, 15th or 16th century. Well, we have uh, the period's names. Um, for example, like around 1000, which was called Heian, Heian period, and then Kamakura, and then Nambokucho Muromachi period, and then Azuchi Momoyama period, and then the very known Edo period, and then later Meiji, Taisho, Showa, Heisei, Reiwa, these eras name we have until today, 2021. So Sengoku Jidai is uh, called warring states period in English, but in Japanese Sengoku Sen means to fight the wars, Goku, some states or the nations, the smaller provinces and stuff. So literally warring states period. Well, uh, 1467 to 1615, that's around 150 years of the period, they are called especially Sengoku Jidai. But historically, they're also called Muromachi period, Azuchi Momoya period, um, depending on the shoguns, the names, or the, uh, the government at that time. And then what makes Sengoku Jidai as Sengoku Jidai? It started with Onin no Ran, Onin War in English, I heard, which happened in 1467. Well, until then, it was, yeah, okay, it was ruled, okay, like with peace and stuff. But then 
um, there just occurred a fight or combat over succession. When the uh, the shogun at that time, Ashikaga Yoshimasa, well, you have to just keep in mind that the uh, these names. Well, you have learned that in Japan we uh, we start with surname and then first name, and then when we speak English, when we talk in English, we usually flip it over the first name and surname as you do. But in this history, like it just surname Ashikaga Yoshimasa. Oda, surname, Nobunaga, first name. So just, just so you know, just, you know, just in case you wondered, Ashikaga Yoshimasa. So that, uh, the, the shogun at that time, and he had a son and he had a little brother in Lo. They started to fight over succession. Like, oh, this is going to be mine, this is going to be mine. They started to fight and it just took 10 years. And then these things became chaos because Shogun was not that, you know, decisive, not the leader person. So just everything got hectic, everything got in chaos. And then until 1615, like lots of the wars and combats all over Japan, you just, you know, this on and coast, everything. Like, you know, people just started to fight over power to the, the ruling right and everything. It just all started. Until Osaka Natsu no Jin, it's called Summer War of Osaka, uh, right before this Edo period starts. Uh, this was in 615, which uh, was caused by Toyotomi Hideyori. Hideyori, which was the, um, who was the, the son of Toyotomi Hideyoshi, the, the second person we're going to talk about today. He wanted to kill <laughs> Tokugawa Ieyasu, yes, the third person we're talking about today, uh, because they had the um, the conflict over the power as well. Like, who's going to be the next shogun? Who going? To, who's going to rule Japan next? And then they just fought, and Tokugawa Ieyasu yes, won. And then this Sengoku period ended. And then later on, like very peaceful 260 years, just began. So these 150 years is called Sengoku Jidai. And in like, within this period, there are the most well-known or like you could say successful three men. And the very first person, the very first samurai, the first daimyo. And when people think about uh, when they talk about Sengoku period, it's always him. It's always him. Oda Nobunaga. Oda Nobunaga. Well, here we're just going to just learn what kind of personality he had or like what kind of what he has done, like good or bad. So these three people we're going to learn and they're very different characters. Each of them has a very characteristics um, they're very different characteristics and then we usually talk about especially like in modern society as well they're like very different personalities or different types of people and usually we just pick up those three to categorize people and oh you're like Oda type or like you're uh, Toyotomi Hideyoshi type you're like type, Tokugawa Ieyasu type and stuff there are very different ways of ruling, or you could say unifiers, you could say. Uh, but the uh, Oda Nobunaga, he's the most popular one, he's the most known one. Why? Well, ruthless innovator, I describe him. Oh, ruthless, he's known. Um, he's like cold hearted, people say but he just focuses on like winning. He focuses on innovation. He focuses on like development and stuff. And then he had the first success in his late thirties. So he was a very um, successful at the very young age. And uh, when we talk about unifying Japan, well, we think about the whole Japan, the whole, like the every piece of Japan and stuff. But at his time, when we talk about unifying Japan, it's it was usually around Kyoto area, 
where the em the emperor and the shogun was there. So when you mean to oh, we go we go get unified Japan. That's that means at that time Kyoto area. And then he did. He succeeded in that in in that sense. But when we talk about unifying the whole Japan, I mean except Hokkaido and Okinawa at that time. And then he wasn't successful. But he was uh, these two were the first ones to have done it. Then Oda Nobunaga, he's also known for the um, innovation he, he in war strategy. Well, until his uh, strategy using the guns from the Western world, he has in, imported these guns and stuff. And then he was the first, the very first person to have used them in the, the actual wars. Um, until then, uh, they're always the uh, on horses, right? People just you know have arrows and stuff, and then the, the huge numbers of horses and troops. But then he just started to use guns. So it was very innovative and very advanced strategy he had. So he just shocked everyone in Japan. And then he also um, contributed to the open economy in Japan. So it was very limited at that time, like, you know, very limited people with power at the class and stuff. But then he just made it open, the very free market tried to conduct. And it was very successful, at least in around castle, so like in downtown, this became very popular. And then it just made a basic idea of the modern uh, the free market in uh, free economy, like open economy. But at the end of his life, he got betrayed by a general um, he had a trust on called Akechi Mitsuhide. In, uh, I mean, in the most popular thesis, yes. So betrayed by his general, um, died at the very young age, 47, 9, and stuff. And I have written this haiku, maybe you can see here. Nakanu nara koroshite shimae hototogisu. And for Toyotam Hideyashi as well. There is another, and there's another. So these are haiku describing what kind of characters they had. But they are not the haiku they themselves have made, but they're just, you know, just as a lessons or like just description of the characters. In his case, nakanu nara koroshite shimai hototogi. Hototogi su is a bird, which is called kaku in English. It's a one kind of bird in Japan. And then it, it just sings very beautifully. But then what would they do if this bird wouldn't sing? Hototogi su, if this bird doesn't sing, what would they do? Well, he, Oda Nobunaga, he would nakanu nara, if the bird doesn't sing, koroshite shimai, just kill it. Koroshite shimai. So that just represents his like ruthless characters or like a bit short tempered, like, mm, it doesn't sing, kill it and stuff. But it doesn't mean that it just, it's true of his characters, but it just description of the characters. Right. And then, uh, Toyotomi Hideyoshi. He was also one of the Oda Nobunaga's generals, but then he's very well known to get a very like dramatic promotion in his career. He used to be peasant, which is like uh, what's called farmer, but he, he didn't. I mean, it's a, as a class, very low class in society, so peasant to unifier. So he started as a very like normal kid and he became a total unifier, the whole Japan. Well, he was very wise. He didn't have power. So he, you know, he took, he, he used his, his brain just to be very wise, to be a very creative way to get, to get closer to those people with power. And then he's also known sandal bearer. So sandal, you know, waraji, um, there's sandals uh, at that time or shoes, you could say. He kept it in his pockets and his chest and to, to make it warm. And then that, you know, just didn't make them warm. 
until his lord, his master, um, would need him. And then uh, Oda Nobunaga was very impressed, like, hey, what are you doing? I'm just making the sandals warm so that you can just wear it very comfortably and stuff. He was like, what? You're the funny one. You're the weird one. And then, you know, he got not noticed. He got attention. And then, oh, well, I mean, you're, you look funny. You, you're interesting. And then he got promoted. That's just one of the episodes. But it's just very, well, and, I mean, he didn't get promoted all the way. Just, you know, making the sandals warm <laughs> wasn't the only way. But he's very well known for this episode. And, well, um, he was... Uh, Toyotomi Hideyoshi was two years older than uh, Oda Nobunaga, but he was the lord, he was the master. But since he got died and betrayed by his general, one of his generals, um, he's lost uh, his lord at 45 at that time, and then later unified Japan. So he became, he has won the combat, he was won the fight of a succession. He, God as a unifier at the age of 53. And then he, you know, he totally unified Japan. He was very satisfied and wait, well, um, what are we going to do? Well, let's go to Asia, you know, go abroad. And then try to conquer China, Korea, the other, the neighbors around Japan. But then no, it, it just never came true. He just died on the way to Korea um, as um, uh, was it? He, he died of sickness. It was unlucky, but that was his life. And then the description of his characters in this haiku. Nakanu nara nakasete miyo hototogisu. Well, nakanu nara and hototogisu, the bird's name, that, that's the same. They're the same. But Nobunaga, Oda Nobunaga, the characters. Okay, kill it. Nakasete miyo. Nakasete miyo. If the bird won't sing, I'll make it sing. I'll be, I'll, I'll think about ideas to make it sing. So he's, he's a man of the, the wisdom and creation, creative ideas and stuff. So that describes his characters in this. The last one. I describe him as a perfect controller of, you know, the beginning of Edo period. Well, he was the one who just finished all Sengoku era after fighting, fighting, fighting and stuff. Okay, no more wars. We're gonna build new era. And he um, started the new government in Tokyo. Uh, they used to be all the way in Kyoto, but he moved to Tokyo as the, the central the government, which at that time is called Edo. Uh, and then what well, he is the oldest within these three. So he has seen those two um, coming, like arising and gone. <laughs> You've seen the two. And the later just unified Japan as on his own way at the age of 58. He's known for the very tight policy in, in, as in the, the government, like um, so that the everyone else, other daimyos, um, so that they won't have extra power to start fights, uh, to start wars or to be against the government and stuff. So he just put everything on control, very creative ideas, um, very different uh, policies he tried so that um, he can centralize the power into Tokyo. And then that also represents sort of like the modern corporations. Like they, um, it's, it's also said like he, his idea, his policy in Edo, Edo government um, is the based idea for modern corporations, at least in Japan. Right, and then his character in Haiku, what did people at, at the later age uh, see? How people see his character in Haiku. Nakanu nara, nakuma de mato hototogisu. Do you get it? Well, nakanu nara, if the bird doesn't sing, won't sing, 
kill it or make it sing or naku made mato let's wait until it sings so that's the um the description the the people in the later age has described tokugawa ieyasu so he's he was known as like very generous uh, character but he was also like um generous and patient uh, and very like you know down to earth very realistic and stuff okay if it doesn't sing why not just wait and then he just you know puts all japan under control very cool minded and very it was called creative ways to unify the japan and to make the basic ideas of the modern government right these are the stories of the most the three most popular samurai in japan uh hope you liked it and that's all for today Thank you for watching. Otsukare sama deshita. If you want to practice Japanese with us and meet your new classmates, you're more than welcome to join us. Okaeri skuru.